Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at two more periodic trends. Uh, one of them is electronegativity and the other one is electron affinity. Let's start with electronegativity. First of all, electronegativity is a measure of the ability of an atom in a chemical compound to attract electrons to itself. What you're going to notice is that a scientist by the name of Linus Pauling uh, devised a range where he gave the elements electronegative values that range from 0.7 to 4.0. You will notice in a moment when I show you the periodic table that the element that has the highest electronegative value, <clears throat> which is 4.0, that honor belongs to fluorine. Therefore, fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. And you'll notice that the elements that have the lowest electronegative value is 0.7 and you'll see that honor belongs to francium, a metal. Now, as you recall, these um, electronegativity also has a pattern just like all the others that you've seen before with atomic radius and ionization energy. When you move across the periodic table from left to right, you're going to see that you're going towards fluorine. Therefore, moving from left to right, electronegativity increases. However, when you're going down a group, you're going away from fluorine, and what you're going to notice is that electronegativity decreases as you're moving down any group. Generally, the metals on the left side of the periodic table have low electronegative values, and the nonmetals on the right side of the periodic table they're the ones that have the higher electronegative values. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you is in our discussion, you're going to see that because electronegativity depends on an atom in a chemical compound, you're going to see that the noble gases are not going to be part of this discussion. You see, normally noble gases do not make chemical bonds, at least not naturally. Therefore, you will notice that they do not have electronegative values. Here is a periodic table showing you the electronegative values that Linus Pauling devised. Notice how the noble gases are not even shown here, okay? And the corner down here where francium is, the lowest electronegative value belongs to uh, francium and cesium as well. It's 0.7. Notice how this corner and the opposite corner over here where fluorine is, that is the most electronegative element and that honor belongs to fluorine. But you'll notice generally as you go from left to right, electronegativity increases. <clears throat> I'll show you this other periodic table here. So when you're going towards the right, you're going towards fluorine, so you become more electronegative. And as you're going down a group, you'll notice how electronegativity goes down. You're going away from fluorine. So using fluorine as your uh, key element is a good way to remember the trends, whether you're increasing or decreasing in electronegativity. Now we have one more trend <clears throat> that's very similar to electronegativity, uh, and this one's called electron affinity. And the electron affinity is an energy change that occurs as a result of an atom gaining an electron. When an atom gains an electron, there's an energy change associated with it, and that energy change is known as electron affinity. And if you look down here, here's a neutral atom, and all of a sudden, this atom is gonna gain an electron. As a result, it becomes an anion, it becomes negatively charged, and when that electron is added, there's an energy that is released as a result of this. That energy change is called electron affinity, and it is measured in kilojoules per mole. Now, the reason that it has negative values is, if you recall, whenever energy is released, we usually use the negative sign to designate energy going out or being released. Now, just like electronegativity, <clears throat> this also has patterns, okay? And I will show you that in just a second using the periodic table. Now, before I do that, I want to compare electron affinity with ionization energy, which was another trend that you learned uh, before. 
When you have ionization energy, and we'll, let's write this down right here, ionization energy, <clears throat> you have an atom in the gas phase, and ionization energy, the definition is different. You see, it's the energy needed to remove an electron from a neutral atom. So let's put it here, energy, okay? This energy is ionization energy. So it takes energy to remove an electron from an atom. As a result, the atom becomes positively charged. It's still a gas. It is now a cation. And here is the electron that you removed. This is a general formula for ionization energy and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. Now, let's compare it to electron affinity. Now in electron affinity, you also have a neutral atom. However, this time the atom is going to gain an electron. The electron is on the reactant side as opposed to the product side with ionization energy. When that atom gains an electron, it becomes an anion. It becomes negatively charged and there is some energy released as a result of that. And that energy that is released is called electron affinity. And just like ionization energy, it is also measured in kilojoules per mole. So you can compare the two equations. Notice how in electron affinity, energy is on the product side, whereas in ionization energy, the energy is on the reactant side. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the pattern. Well, if you notice, electron affinity and, ion and um, electronegativity follow the exact same pattern. As you go across a period from left to right, electron affinity increases. Now, we're going to do this. We are going to basically cross out the noble gases for the same reason we did with electronegativity. As far as our discussion is concerned, the noble gases really are not part of this. They, in nature, they don't form bonds. They're stable the way they are. So you'll notice how I'm, I'm going to exclude the noble gases in this discussion. Also, notice the way I explained it earlier. If you're going down a group, electron, um, electronegativity decreases. So does electron affinity. They both follow the exact same pattern. Okay, From left to right, electron affinity increases. From up, down, electron affinity decreases, just like electronegativity. Now, I'm going to show you something that is, is very unique here. Uh, we've always been talking about exceptions, okay? The most electronegative element is fluorine. No doubt there. In fact, the value given to fluorine according to Linus Pauling was 4.0. If you look at this chart here, you're going to notice that fluorine is not the element that has the highest electron affinity. It might have the highest electronegativity, but it does not have the highest electron affinity. That honor goes to chlorine. I want you to compare the electron affinity value of chlorine with fluorine. The more negative the value, the greater the electron affinity. In fact, if you look at a periodic table, we'll go back here for a minute. Um, you'll notice that as you go from left to right, the value will become increasingly more negative. The more negative meaning the more energy that's released, the more electron affinity that they have. The non-metals are usually the ones that have the higher electron affinity values. Think about it. What makes non-metals happy is that they want to grab electrons. They have very high electron affinities. What that means is that they, they are... Um, in the need for an electron. They want an electron badly. The metals are the opposites. They don't want electrons. In fact, they want to do the opposite. They actually want to get rid of their electrons. So many metals have positive values as far as their electron affinity con is concerned. So you'll notice that as you go from left to right, 
the values become increasingly more negative. The more negative the value, the more electron affinity the element has. So going back to this chart, chlorine is roughly negative 350 kilojoules and fluorine is somewhere around negative 330. So you would normally expect fluorine, if you follow patterns, to be the most electron affinity as far as elements are concerned, yet it's not. Chlorine happens to be an exception here. Chlorine is actually higher in an electron affinity compared to fluorine. Now there's a reason for this, okay? And I'm gonna explain why the exception. If you look here, fluorine is the anomaly. The anomaly meaning the exception. And the reason that chlorine has more electron, is more, or has a higher electron affinity, has to do with the size of the atom. You see, fluorine is a smaller atom. It wants an electron. But since it's a smaller atom, as that electron is coming in, there's other electrons already there, and it's a little bit more crowded because it's smaller. So fluorine experiences what is called higher electron-electron repulsions. So that electron does want to come in, but because the element is smaller, it doesn't have a lot of space. So it experiences that, you know, a little bit of that electron-electron repulsion, and it's a little bit more difficult for that electron to enter a fluorine atom. Now chlorine, just like fluorine, wants an electron badly. The difference is that, that chlorine is a bigger atom. Therefore, it's not as, as crowded. It, it's got more space. So when that electron is coming in, it is easier for that electron to enter a larger atom where there's more space. It experiences less electron-electron repulsion and chlorine receives that electron much easier than fluorine does. So the reason that chlorine is the most electronegative element, I'm sorry, not electronegative, has the highest electron affinity, is because of the size, okay? Fluorine being such a smaller sized element, it makes it just a little bit more difficult for that electron to go in. But keep in mind, both fluorine and chlorine and all the halogens, for that matter, they, um, they do want to receive an electron, okay? They are atoms that have high electron affinities. But of the four, you would think fluorine is the most, yet chlorine is the most for the reasons that I just mentioned, all right? So I hope that explanation helps. Just keep in mind that both electronegativity and electron affinity follow the same pattern. As you go from left to right across a period, both of electronegativity and electron affinity increases. And as you go down a group, up down, electronegativity as well as electron affinity decreases. And the noble gases are usually never used as part of this discussion because they usually do not make any bonds. Okay? I hope that helps.